So WAN 2.5 just dropped, and it's uncensored. So you can say as much as you please. <laughs> So the intro you just saw was generated using WAN 2.5, which a lot of people are calling the VO3 killer, but is it really true? First of all, let's talk about why WAN 2.5 is a big deal. It features native audio generation, so we're talking sound effects as well as speech. You're able to generate up to 10 seconds of footage at 1080p resolution. And of course, it features the option of image to video like VO3, so you've still got that level of control. In terms of applications, the sky really is the limit. We can create speaking content and product ads. It's able to carry out some really quite complex prompts. And I think what's going to attract a lot of people to this tool is the fact that it's uncensored meaning you have a lot more creative freedom in terms of building out your scene. You can use a celebrity's likeness, for example, or you can even swear, like you saw in the intro. I've been testing out WAN within Higgsfield and they've got an option for unlimited generations if you're on either the ultimate or creator plans and also daily free runs for all plans as well. So it's a really great time to hop on and do some testing if you're interested. Of course, if you guys did wanna go ahead and check it out, be sure to click the link down below in the description. And you can see they've got a section for their favorite WAN 2.5 generations created by the community. So I thought we would start by taking a look at some of these and then I'll run you through the workflow I used to create the intro. I'm immediately drawn here to this clip of Dumbledore with the iPhone. I was actually watching Deathly Hallows part two last night. Definitely didn't see him rocking this type of tech. Let's have a little look. Greatest magic is an iPhone. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. So the speech, the movement of the mouth looks pretty good. Reflections on the back of the phone as well, all looking really nice and realistic. Checking, waiting on this drop like a storm in the sky. Now the new model's here and it's taking me high. I'm talking power in the lines, every word is a flame. Feeling turbocharged, can't hold back the game. You guys have to understand, this is a really quite complex prompt with the whip pans and moving between different rooms in this person's house, but it all still feels consistent. What have we got here? Wolf of Wall Street Nutella. The only thing sweeter than Nutella is Margot Robbie. The only <laughs> thing sweeter than Nutella is Margot Robbie. The sharpness as well, it's looking really great quality. Oh, and the classic Pulp Fiction. Everyone loves doing AI versions of this scene. Drink Coke or we'll kill you. <laughs> Fully knocking the pistol out of frame with a can of Coke. So what's, is this a scene from, this is from The Revenant, right? Man, right now, all I need is Jack and Sydney Sweeney. Some really quite impressive outputs here from WAN 2.5. And you can really see the variety of content that you're gonna be able to create with this tool is pretty versatile, isn't it? With that being said, let me just quickly run you guys through the process for how I created the intro for this video within Higgsfield using WAN 2.5. So back on the homepage here for Higgsfield, if we go up to the top left-hand corner to the image tab, we can go down to create image. And you can see a whole load of images I've generated here. You've got access Access to multiple different tools, including Higgsfield Soul, their own image model, Nano Banana, Sea Dream 4.0, and Flux Context Max. Now, the character from the intro was generated using Nano Banana and actually a really simple text prompt. I just put in a humanoid whose skin is cracked geode glowing purple from within, whereas simple tattered orange monk robes sitting in perfect meditation on a cliffside with storm waves crashing below. And I accidentally left in this image reference of myself and you can see that it did kind of end up influencing the final output because our geode monk has glasses and a beard. So there's a little bit of me in there somewhere. And if we just go ahead and download this image, we can create the close up shot. I did originally have that built in here. I think I might have deleted it or something, but we can just go ahead and carry that out again now. We can go ahead and select Nano Banana from the tool menu and we can upload our starting image. And just go ahead with a simple prompt, show an extreme close up of the man's face and hit generate. And you can see here, we also have the option for unlimited generations as well when it comes to Nano Banana. Reason I didn't use that just then is because you get put in a little bit of a longer queue. But the upside of course is that you're not spending any credits whatsoever and you can see our result here 
absolutely perfect. Loads of really nice textural detail there. And once we have our starting images downloaded, we can go back up to the top left hand corner and this time go on the video tab. We just go down to create video. At the very top, we want to select general. We can go ahead and upload our starting frame. We want to fill in our text prompt. And if you did want to reuse a prompt from a previous generation, you can simply go over to the right hand side and click on it and it's going to populate this field. Now you also have the option for enhance on or enhance off. Really, this is tailored towards your use case. If you've written out a text prompt, which is very specific and you know exactly what you want to get back from WAN 2.5, you're better off leaving enhance off. But if you want it to have a little bit more free reign, it's going to analyze the image and kind of help to flesh out your prompt with more detail. Of course, here we can pick from a wide variety of video generation models. We've got WAN 2.5 and WAN 2.5 fast. You're going to get better quality results from just base 2.5. But with fast, you're going to get your generations that much quicker. We can then select the duration that we want. We can go five seconds or 10 seconds. VO3 only goes up to eight seconds. So do keep that in mind. And then we can also select our resolution going all the way up to 1080p. Only thing with this is if we did want to use the unlimited generations, we would have to stick to 720p. And with that, you can see here, we've got the option to toggle on and off unlimited mode. And this simply means that you won't spend any credits for your generations, but you will just be put into the standard queue rather than the priority queue. So this is ideal if you want to do a bit of experimenting with WAN 2.5, maybe you could set a few different generations off, go off, make a cup of tea, come back, they'll be done and you can check out how they turned out. So I've just put together a really basic edit stitching together my three different WAN 2.5 outputs. I've just added some ambient sound in the background of waves crashing. Now you could have just got this generated through WAN 2.5. I just didn't specify that I wanted it added within the text prompt. For me personally, I like to be able to add ambient sound effects behind what I've generated. But if you did put that in a text prompt, you would have got it back. And what I've also done, and I do this to all of my AI video generations now, is add a layer of film grain on top. So that's just added with this adjustment layer here. And I can understand this as a kind of aesthetic choice might not be for everyone. But I think because of my VFX background, it's something that we often end up doing to add that extra kind of textural detail. So if we go ahead and zoom in, for example, and I turn the adjustment layer on and off, I don't know, just adding that film grain for me just instantly makes it feel more real and a little bit more premium as well. That being said, we'll go ahead and watch this in its current state. So WAN 2.5 just dropped and it's uncensored. So you can say as much as you please. <laughs> And I've also blended the audio tracks for each generation so they're nice to kind of fade in and out so there's no kind of abrupt starts and stops. Now, if we did want to go ahead and take this a little step further to have a bit more creative control, we can go ahead and mute our audio track of the ambient waves. If we go to export, we can just select MP3 from this drop down menu and we're just going to output the audio. So here we are over on 11 labs. And if we go to the top left hand corner now, we can select voices. And over here, we can select create or clone a voice. And here it gives us the option to design an entirely new voice from a text prompt. So we're going to select that option. So I'm just going to put in the prompt a deep, booming male voice of an ancient mystical monk. Voice is gruff as if he's in his 50s. And we'll hit generate voice. And we can go ahead and listen to what we've got back. Greetings, seeker. It is good to see you. Sounds pretty bang on to me. Let's listen to voice two. Greetings, seeker. It is good to see you. Like that one. More reverb on the this. The path you walk is long. Let's listen to voice three. Greetings, seeker. It is good to see you. A little bit too aggressive, that one. I'm going to go Greetings. for voice two. I'm going to call it our geode monk. And then within language, we want to go ahead and select English and we can save our voice. Now, if we go over to the top left hand corner and select voice changer, we can drag and drop in our exported MP3 from Premiere Pro. So WAN 2.5 just dropped and it's uncensored. 
And on the right hand side, we can select our geode monk from the voice options. Then we go ahead and click generate speech. And that came back really quickly. Let's have a listen to our result. So when 2.5 just dropped and it's uncensored. It's done a really great job. Let's go ahead and get that downloaded. Heading back to Premiere Pro, we can get that audio imported and we can drop it onto our timeline. So we can mute our old audio track where we had the kind of more high pitched voice tone. So when 2.5 just dropped, which just doesn't really suit that character, I think. So getting that muted, we can swap in our new audio track and it sounds like this. So when 2.5 just dropped and it's uncensored. And you can see that by combining these multiple tools, it just gives us that little bit more control of our final output. I really do hope you guys have enjoyed today's video and learned a couple of bits from it. Do let me know down below in the comment section if you have any questions whatsoever. And of course, how you're getting on with WAN 2.5. If you have enjoyed today's video, make sure to whack a like on there for me. Consider subscribing if you're new. And of course, ring that bell notification icon so you never miss any future uploads. I'll catch you guys in the next one.